Tatai tatai bajalako, gana gana tahe chandiraro. Prene dala dala sona ranga. Saranino pura bahaji Mukunda maghava yadava hari Boli na bolo re vandhana bori Nichini java se jela re rati Diva shashari rasahati Emana dhubla bamana vadeha Kaya ki koro bhavana teha Ebena bhajile ya shoda chuta Chara ni pori vila hati Odita tapana hoi le asya Dina jela bale hai bebi asya Kabe keno e be alata hoi Na bajari raya rahati Vivana nitya jana hata Kahina na vida vipada bhat Namashaya kori achani chumi Kaka apana kaji Jivera kalyana sadhana kam Jagate ase en madhura nam Avidya ki mira tapana rupi Raga gane bira hai ke Krishna nam shudha khori apan Yudho bhakati vinho da pran Nama bina kitu nahi ko ara Choda bhuva nama hake Jeet jago, jeet jago, 
गौरा चंदा भोले खोता निंद्रा जायो माया ही सच्ची रखो ले बाजी बाबली आए थे समसारा बिठारे हिले तुम्हें आविद्यारा बोले तुम्हारे लोए ते आमी होइ नो आवाजारा Thank you. Hare Nama Maha Mantra Lo Tumi Maha Ki Vaka Thibhi Noda Prabhu Charane Padhiya Se Hare Nama Mantra Loi Lama Giyya Nithai Gaur Hari Bho Hari Bho Hari Bho Nithai Gaur Hari Bho Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 1, Questions by Vidura, text number 11. 
Ajata Shatro Pratyacha Dayam Titikshato Durvishaham Tavaga Sahanujo Yatra Vrikodarahi Swasam Rusha Yatwam Alam Bibesi Ajata Shatro Pratyachadayam Tetikshato Durvishaham Tavaga Sahanujo Yatra Vrikodarahi Swasam Rusha Yatwam Alam Bebesi Ajata Shatro Pratyachadayam Titikshato Durvishaham Tavaga Sahanujo Yatra Vrikodarahi Swasam Rusha Yatra Tvam alam bebesi Chen Ajata satro pratiyachadayam Ajata satro pratiyachadayam Ajata Satyo Pratidya Sadayam 
Ajata Shatra of Yudhisthira, who had no enemy. Pradyacha, return. Dayam, legitimate share. To take Shatta of he who is so forbearing. Just a minute, I lost my... My iPhone, Krishna. Oh, thank you. Durvasaham, unbearable, tava, your, aga, offense, saha, along with, anuja, younger brothers, yatra, wherein, vrikodara, bhima, ahin, revenging snake. Swasan, breathing heavily. Rusha, in anger. Yat, whom, twam, you, alam, verily. Bibesi, do fear. So Vidura said, you must now return the legitimate share to Yudhisthira who has no enemies and who has been forbearing through untold sufferings due to your offences. He is waiting with his younger brothers, among whom is the revengeful Bhima, breathing heavily like a snake. Surely you are afraid of him. How, how does this move? How do I get the next verse? There's no purpose. I think this one don't have purpose. This one don't have purpose. Yeah, I know. I want the next verse. Better. Okay, ne next verse. Patam Sudevo Bhagavan Makundo Grihitavan Sak Siti Deva Deva Aste Swapuryam Yadu Deva Devo Vinirjita Shesha Niradeva Deva Translation Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead, has accepted the sons of Prita as his kinsmen, and all the kings of the world are with Lord Sri Krishna. He is present in his home with all his family members the kings and princes of the Yadu dynasty who have conquered an unlimited number of rulers and he is their lord. Vidura purport, Vidura gave Dhritarashtra a very good counsel regarding political alliance with the sons of Prita, the Pandavas. The first thing he said was that Lord Krishna was intimately related with them as their cousin because Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is worshipable by all brahmanas and demigods who are the controllers of the universal affairs. Beside that, Lord Krishna and his family members, the royal order of the Yadu dynasty, were the conquerors of all kings of the world. The Kshatriyas used to fight the kings of various dominions 
and kidnapped their beautiful princess daughters after conquering their relatives. This system was laudable because the Kshatriyas and the princesses would be married only on the basis of the chivalry of the conquering Kshatriya. All the young princes of the Yadu dynasty married the daughters of other kings in this way by chivalrous force and thus they were conquerors of all the kings of the world. Vidura wanted to impress upon his elder brother that fighting with the Pandavas was fraught with many dangers because they were supported by Lord Krishna who had conquered even in his childhood demons like Kamsa and Jarasandha and demigods like Brahma and Indra. Therefore all universal power was behind the Pandavas. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militadjena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Kripasindu Vaevacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're hearing how Vidura was instructing Dhritarashtra. Vidura was the younger brother and he was come, he'd come in to give advice to Dhritarashtra because Dhritarashtra is blind and he's asking Vidura what, you know, what's his opinion. So Vidura is telling him about the dangers which face the Korobas. In the first verse we read, he was mentioning about how Bhima is very angry. He's breathing heavily like an angry snake. You know, when the snake is angry, then they'll bite very anyone who comes near them. And so Bhima, is, Vidura is saying, Bhima is very powerful and he's very angry. So that's something to be afraid of because Bhima had also vowed that he would kill all the sons of Dhritarashtra and he did and he also vowed, well it was Drupadi made the vow, uh, Drupadi, Bhima made three vows, one was he'd kill all the sons of Dhritarashtra and the second one was that he would break the thigh of Duryodhana. Because Duryodhana said to Drupadi, come and sit on my lap and he hit his thigh like this. And so it was a great insult to a royal princess like Drupadi who was the wife of the Pandavas. But he spoke to her like that. So Bhima said, I will break that thigh. And then the third vow he made was that he would, he would uh, rip out the heart of Dushasan because Dushasan was the one who had tried to disrobe Draupadi and who had untied her hair. So he, he actually killed Dushasan and he ripped out his heart and took the blood to wash the hair of Draupadi. And in this way Draupadi was uh, comforted that she got the revenge for being uh, manhandled by these very degraded Kauravas. So Vidura is mentioning these different things and the second verse we read he mentions two more things. He mentions that Lord Krishna is the relative of the Pandavas. Lord Krishna was related to them so they, they had an intimate connection with each other. Lord Krishna was born from Vasudev and Devaki and Vasudev's sister is Kunti. 
and Kunti, the mother of the Pandavas. So they have a relationship, Lord Krishna and the Pandavas are related to each other. So they have natural affection for each other. And then the third point which is mentioned today by Vidura was how Lord Krishna had already defeated so many other personalities. And he had shown that in capturing 16,108 wives for himself he had defeated so many different kings. The first wife, for example, was Rukmini. And in order to marry Rukmini, he had to go there and fight uh, Well, we, they, First of all, he came there and kidnapped Rukmini. And then when they came after him, especially Rukmini's brother Rukmi came after him, Lord Krishna fought with him. And they were very powerful people, they were all Kshatriyas from the royal family. Rukmi had wanted to marry Rukmini to Sishupal because Sishupal was his friend. But Rukmini had written a letter to Lord Krishna and she would asked Lord Krishna to come and take her. She wanted to marry Krishna. So Krishna got the letter and he came there just on the day when Rukmini was supposed to marry Sishupal. And the marriage was all arranged and all of Sishupal's friends, they had all come. All the other Kshatriya kings, powerful kings, they had all come to attend the wedding. And they, they knew there was a danger that Lord Krishna may come there and try to interfere. Because they knew about Lord Krishna and they knew how powerful he was. So they were all there to guard Rukmini. But still Krishna came there and still he kidnapped her. And they all came after Krishna and Krishna fought with them. And he fought especially with the brother Rukmini, uh, Rukmini's brother Rukmi. And Krishna defeated him but he didn't kill him. Because Rukmini pleaded, Rukmini pleaded, oh, he's my brother, please don't kill him. So Krishna shaved off some of his hair and in this way hum humiliated him. And so Krishna had done things like this. This was the first queen. And then the second queen married by Lord Krishna was, uh, he got Satyava Satyavati. And there was also Jambavati. Satyavati and Jambavati. This happened in relation to the Shaimantaka jewel. When the Shaimantaka jewel was stolen, they thought Krishna had stolen it. And Krishna knew that he had nothing to do, he never touched it. But he had to prove his innocence. So he went out and he found, he found out what had happened to the jewel. And he found out that uh, it was now with Jambavan. So he went into the cave where Jambavan lives. Jambavan is from the time of Lord Ramachandra and he's a powerful bear or monkey. What's the monkey? Is he a monkey or a bear? And anyway, Jambavan. They're not ordinary human beings, they're actually powerful demigods who come to take part in the pastimes of the Lord. So Jambavan was from very old, but he's from the times of Lord Ramachandra, very powerful. And, and Lord Krishna came in the cave and he found a child, there was a young child there playing with the jewel. And so when Lord Krishna came in there, the nurse who was taking care of the child became afraid and she screamed. And Jambavan came and without questioning, he began to fight with Lord Krishna because he saw there's somebody intruding into my cave. Then Jambavan and Lord Krishna fought for 28 days and Jambavan couldn't defeat Krishna. And then Jambavan realized after fighting for 28 days that this person must be non-different from Lord Ramachandra. And so Jambavan surrendered himself to Lord Krishna. And not only did he surrender himself, he gave the jewel 
and he also gave his daughter, he said, take my daughter in marriage. So Jambavati was given to Lord Krishna and then Krishna brought back the Shaimantaka jewel to Dwarka and he gave it to Satrajit because the jewel was given, it was actually Satrajit's jewel, it had been given to him by the sun god. And this Jew was producing gold every day, a lot of gold every day. So it was very powerful. So Lord Krishna gave it to Satrajit and then Satrajit felt ashamed because he thought Lord Krishna had stolen the jewel. But Lord Krishna told him what had happened, how somebody had been killed, the brother of Satrajit had been killed, and the lion had taken the jewel and Jambavan had killed the lion and Lord Krishna had to fight with Jambavan to get back the jewel. So Satrajit felt ashamed and he gave his daughter to Lord Krishna in marriage. And that was Satya, Satyabhama. No, not Satyavati, Satyabhama. So, huh? Jambavati and Satyabhama. Huh? Right? And he, he wanted to give the jewel to Krishna, but Krishna said, no, no, I don't want the jewel, you keep it. Because <laughs> Krishna knew just having that kind of jewel is just a source of trouble. And it happened, Satrajit got murdered because some people came, they wanted to steal it. But when Satrajit got murdered, because Satyabhama had become the wife of Lord Krishna, so she complained to Lord Krishna, they killed my father. So Lord Krishna came and he got the people who killed Satrajit because he accepted Satyabhama as his wife. So like, like this, Lord Krishna uh, was involved in fighting with so many different Kshatriyas. He proved his strength and Prabhupada also mentions how he, he killed people like Kamsa. When he was just a young boy, he was brought from Vrindavan, Akrura had gone to Vrindavan and brought Krishna and Balaram to Mathura to take part in a wrestling match. And they had these huge powerful wrestlers whose bodies were like rocks. And Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were little boys, cowherd boys coming from Vrindavan. And they were supposed to fight them in the wrestling match. So it was, it, it, it was not very balanced, it wasn't a fair fight. But still Lord Krishna agreed and he went there and he fought with them and Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram defeated these wrestlers. And after he defeated them, then Kamsa became very angry and Kamsa jumped into the arena because Kamsa was watching the wrestling match. He was thinking that Krishna and Balaram were surely going to be killed by these wrestlers. But when Krishna and Balaram won, then Kamsa became angry, he pulled out his sword and he jumped into the arena and he was trying, he wanted to come and kill Krishna, but Krishna just defeat, smashed him and brought him to the ground and punched him and killed him and then dragged him on, across the ground. So Krishna killed Kamsa and then Jarasandha, Krishna didn't personally fight Jarasandha, he'd already fought him. Earlier, when Krishna first came to Mathura, Jarasandha had come attacking Mathura with an army and Krishna had come there and fought his army 17 times. Jarasandha came 17 times. Each time he came with an army, Krishna would kill everyone except Jarasandha. They tell Jarasandha go. He didn't kill Jarasandha. And Jarasandha would go and his friends would say, oh it was just bad luck. Get another army, go again, fight again. And Jarasandha came back with a new army and again Krishna killed them all and then let Jarasandha go. And they'd say to Jarasandha, don't worry, uh, you know, you're just unlucky. Try again, I'm sure next time you win. And in this way they fought 17 times. And 17 times, each time Krishna defeated Jarasandha. And then the 18th time it happened, the one more time, 
Jarasand, he never gave up. He kept wanting to fight. You see, so the 18th time Jarasandha came again with an army. This time another army was also coming. Another demon called Kala Yavana was coming. So Lord Krishna was worried about the people from Mathura. So that was when Krishna transferred all the people from Mathura, he transferred them all to Dwarka because he didn't want any harm to come to them. And he wanted to also protect the people in Vrindavan. He didn't want any of these kings going to Vrindavan and harming any of his devotees who were in these places. So, but still Krishna arranged for a fight. Later on they fought, Krishna came with Bhima and Arjuna to see Jarasandha. Because Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to perform the, uh, the Rajasuya Yagna. And in order to do that, the king has to establish their supremacy over all the other kings. So until they got, until Jarasandha admitted the supremacy of Maharaj Yudhisthira, they were not able to do this Yagya. So they had to go to Maharaj, they had to go and see Jarasandha. So Lord Krishna and Arjuna and Bhima disguised themselves as Brahmanas. They put on the simple dress of Brahmanas and they went to see Jarasandha because Jarasandha liked to give charity to Brahmanas. Although he was a demon and his daughters had all married, they'd all married the Kamsa's uh, brothers. They were, so he was, he was a, a real demon, but still he, he liked to follow things like giving charity to Brahmanas because he knew it's very beneficial. You give charity to Brahmanas, you know, come back many times. So the people do like that. They, they have that motivation sometimes when they're giving charity. They, they, they don't give in the mood of pure goodness, but they give more in the mood of passion. In the mode of passion, you want, you know, you want benefit from it. You want to, it should come back, right? They, they say in India, ek paisa dega, just like malega, right? We will give one paisa and we'll get back ten lakhs. <laughs> Some people think like that, you think. So that's not the mode of goodness, you know. But Janasanda is giving to the Brahmanas. Just like Bali Maharaj was told by Sukracharya, give to the Brahmanas. So Jarasandha was giving to the Brahmanas. So Lord Krishna and Bhima and Arjuna, they came there like Brahmanas and they're begging charity. So Jarasandha, they said, what do you want? And they said, we want a fight. We want to fight you. And Jarasandha looked at them and he said, I, I didn't think you people were Brahmanas. He said, I could see the mark on their shoulders from carrying weapons. The, the Kshatriyas, they carry heavy weapons, so their shoulders are marked. And they're very powerful. And their voices were like thunder. When they spoke, you know, Brahmanas, Brahmanas are more learned and gentle. Vidya Vinaya Sampani, Brahmani Gavi Hastani. The Brahmana is Vidya Vinaya, learned and gentle. But Bhima, Arjuna, <laughs> you know, they're powerful Kshatriyas, you know. <laughs> and they speak with authority, very powerful. They have that Ishwara Bhav, you know, something, you know, you! You know, <laughs> you know people, the voice is so powerful, just, people just freeze. So Bhima and Arjuna, they're like that, you know, they're Maharatis, very powerful. And they come to beg charity. And so Jarasandha said, I didn't think you were Brahmanas. But anyway, you want charity, what do you want? And they said, we want to fight with you. And so he said, oh, you want to fight with me? But then he said, oh, you are Krishna. He said, I'm not going to fight with you. You ran away last time I came to fight you. You are a coward. You are rancher. You ran away from the battlefield. I'm not going to fight you. And he said to Arjuna, 
You're not strong enough. He said, you won't be a good fight for me. So I'm not going to fight with you either. He said, Bhima, you look like you could give me a good fight. I'll fight with you. And that's what happened. Jara, Sanda and Bhima fought each other. And they fought for many days, many days. And Bhima could not defeat. And Jarasandha also could not defeat. They were fighting each other. They could not be defeated. Neither one could win. But then Krishna, Lord Krishna gave the hint to Bhima how to defeat him. Lord Krishna picked up a twig and he split it down the middle. And he said, Jarasandha, was, he was born as a baby in two halves. When the mother conceived the child, the mother saw two halves and she thought, oh, yeah, what kind of child is this? And she left the two halves in the forest. But the two halves were found by the witch. There was a witch called Jara. And Jara found the two halves and she joined them together. She put the two halves together. So he got the name Jara Sanda one who is joined by Jara. And he grew to be very powerful, very, very powerful. He was a very great Maharati, could fight with Bhim, and Bhima couldn't defeat him. But then Lord Krishna showed him how you could defeat him. So Bhima understood and he went forward and he grabbed one foot and he picked up the other leg and ripped him right down the middle. Ripped him right down the middle. So his, his body was shown in two and he threw the two halves away, far away from each other. So they couldn't be done. So in this way, this is how they killed Jarasandha. Lord Krishna could have killed him but he didn't take advantage. He wanted Bhima to do it. He, Lord Krishna likes sometimes to give the credit to his devotees. Just like at the battle of Kurukshetra, there were so many times Lord Krishna could have killed everyone on the battle, but he wanted Arjuna to get, to get the credit. And whenever Arjuna was in any danger, then Lord Krishna was always there to help him and to save him. Just like one time Grandfather Bhishma came and Grandfather Bhishma had bowed that I'm going to kill Arjuna tomorrow. And that is, I'm going, I make a vow because uh, Duryodhana was saying to Bhishma, you're not fighting, you don't want to kill these Pandavas, you're not fighting hard enough, you're not really trying, you like them too much. So Bhishma became angry. He said, look, tomorrow I'm going to kill one of them, I'll kill them. Well, first of all, he had five arrows. He said, with these five arrows, tomorrow I'm going to kill them. But Lord Krishna knew about this and Lord Krishna knew that, uh, that Bhishma had promised that if, if you want anything from me, just come and ask. You know. So they came, they said, go and ask Bhishma to give you those arrows. So they said, you, you promised you could give us anything? He said, yes, what do you want? He said, we want those five arrows. And so he had to give up the arrows. But still, the, ne the next day he vowed he will kill one of the Pandavas and it happened Arjuna was in trouble and his chariot got in trouble and Bhishma was coming forward to kill Arjuna. So at that time Krishna picked up the wheel from the chariot and he came running towards Grandfather Bhishma. And when Grandfather Bhishma saw Lord Krishna coming forward with the chariot wheel in his hand, then Grandfather Bhishma stopped. And he was satisfied because Krishna had broken his promise. He'd come to fight. Although he vowed he would not fight, he broke that promise. He didn't actually fight but he was ready to fight in order to save the life of his devotee. So in this way Krishna had showed great strength and then he, 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 there were so many other the different wives, sometimes he had to fight kings to win them. For example, Boma, there was one demon, Boma, who was actually the son of Bhumi. 
And he had kidnapped 16,100 princesses and he was keeping them all in his palace for his own enjoyment. They were all young girls from royal families because in those days there were many, many kings. So there were 16,100 young princesses being held there. And this demon Boma was so powerful, he had taken the earrings from Mother Aditi. He'd taken the earrings from Mother Aditi and he'd taken the umbrella from Varuna, very uh, important symbols. But this demon Boma had somehow he'd taken these things. So they, the demigods could not defeat him and they came to Lord Krishna and asked Lord Krishna, please help us to get these things back. So Lord Krishna went there to, to where the demon Boma was living and there was another demon protecting Boma Sura. There was a demon called Mura and the whole Boma kingdom was surrounded by a fort and there was a moat and there was, they had barbed wire and they had electric fencing and they had many things to protect them. But Lord Krishna came through all of it and he came forward, he killed the demon Mura and then he came and fought with Bomashura and that was quite a big fight as well. But Lord Krishna brought, he brought with him at that time, he brought one of his wives, he brought Satyabhama. He brought Satyabhama because Satyabhama is an expansion of Bhumi. Bhumi was the mother of this demon Boma and she she promised that my son should only be killed with my permission. Without my permission you shouldn't kill him. So when Lord Krishna was fighting Boma, he took permission from Satyabhama because Satyabhama is the expansion of Bhumi. And in this way Lord Krishna fought with Boma Sura and killed him. And then he accepted all the 16,100 princesses. He accepted them all because no other man would touch them again because they'd all been taken by another man. And so the, they had lost their chastity. But Lord Krishna was very compassionate and merciful to them and he accepted all of them and he brought them all back to Dwarka. And he married each and every one of them at the same time. They had 16,100 Vivaba Yatyats all at one time. Lord Krishna expanded himself to be present at each of the yajyas. And not only did Krishna expand himself, but he also arranged that his mother and father, Vasudeva and Devaki, also come to the marriage and they also expanded themselves to be present in the marriage. So this all shows the inconceivable power of Lord Krishna. So Vidura is pointing out to Dhritarashtra, you have to understand Lord Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. He's not just an ordinary demigod, he's the supreme Lord himself, he's Swayam Bhagavan. You want to fight him, you're trying to do harm to him or to his devotees, the Pandavas, you'll never be able to defeat him. You'll, you'll never be able to do harm to them. And Vidura is trying to explain these things to Dhritarashtra. But as we heard a few days ago, Dhritarashtra is blind. He's blind materially and blind spiritually. He's very attached to his son and his kingdom and he's very attached that his sons should be king, they should be the rulers and he only listens to his eldest son Duryodhan and he doesn't hear anything else. So Dhritarashtra doesn't hear anything either. So this is the situation. Vidura's got a difficult task trying to preach. Just like the ninth offense in chanting the holy name try to preach the glories of the Lord to faithless persons. It's an offense. You waste your time. 
They have no faith. Why should you tell them the glories of the holy name? Then here you can see Vidura is telling the glories of Lord Krishna to Dhritarashtra. No effect. Doesn't make, Dhritarashtra doesn't hear, doesn't listen. So the same way we don't preach the glories of the holy name until people have faith. First you have to create faith. Vidura is trying to create faith in Dhritarashtra. He wants them to understand who is Lord Krishna and then bring him to his senses. Then he will know how to act properly. So similarly when we preach about chanting the holy name we have to create faith in people. And we do it by chanting Hare Krishna. Let people chant the holy name, have a lot of kirtan and eat prasadam and in that way they get a lot of faith. The holy name is very powerful. If they just chant, even though they don't know about the holy name, but if they chant, if they take part in the kirtan, they get so much benefit. They become purified. And that is the power of the holy name. Golokera primadan harinam sankirtan. The holy name comes down from Goloka and it cleanses the heart. And when the heart is clean, then we're ready to hear about Krishna and to understand Krishna's position. Okay, any questions? When we do? When he does the Raja Surya Yakya, why does he need to get the permission from the demon? But that is the, 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 the whole principle of the yajna, that you're going to do the Rajasuya yajna, you have to establish yourself as the supreme ruler in the world. And all the kings have to accept your subordination, their subordination. And they have to pay taxes also. Even though the demon also they need to pay taxes, huh? Yeah. They have to pay taxes so that they can do the yajna. So Lord uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira sent the brothers, he sent his four brothers out in different directions to go everywhere and bring gold and make sure all the people have recognized Maharaj Yudhisthira as, as the emperor, as the supreme ruler. Mm. Rajasuya. When the Lord Krishna was doing his pastime, he killed many demons. But at the same time, when he met Sudama, Brahmana friend, he washed his feet, he washed the Brahmana feet. And you are also Brahmana. We want to wash your feet, but at least on your appearance day. And then you're not allowed. <laughs> I, I, I know a long time ago when we asked, Washing feet, he said, No, only in Yasa Puja day. So, oh, I never said that. It was yesterday. And we are expect, I was thinking that at least once a year we can wash your feet. No, no, no. no. But, Allah, what is the reason? I just want to know. Even the Krishna washed the Brahmana feet, and I'm sure you are also Brahmana. You allow us to. Well, you, you have to understand the very culture was pre present then. When Lord Krishna did that, he was following the Vedic culture. But nowadays the Vedic culture is not so prominent. People don't understand the Vedic culture. They don't follow the Vedic culture. And so it creates a bad, bad kind of impression, you know. So the GDC also said, uh, well, I mean, the, the, there are certain places where you can do these things, but some pla you have to be conscious about other people. Some people, like Jagpataka Swami Maharaj, you know, he can do it. You know, you go to Bangladesh, and you go in Bangladesh, there's many Bengali Hindus there. 
and you know they all do this kind of thing. They do it for they do it for every, all the sadhus, you know. Don't just do it for the guru. They do it for all the sadhus. Come out and wash the feet. But it's it's not a, a thing which we want to promote. Because sometimes it happens also, you know, you do these things, you take a lot of karma for that. And that karma, you may not be able to digest all that karma. Then there was one daughter, ten sons and one daughter. Is there any significance for these numbers? No, I don't know any significance. I've never heard. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Brindaki. Yeah.